good service. The basic reason why we have groups like ASEAN is the planet is too small for one nation. It's too small for one island. It's too small for one village. We are all part of a global village. And therefore, if there are abuses in global uh, multinational corporations, it is up to the educators to show why they are wrong. It is up to us to empower people to say, hey, I can ride the global wave and not be raped by these multinationals. Because indeed, they're good examples. Case in point, rice. Why is it that IRI helped save China and India from great famine? Because we cooperated in research. We cooperated because poor Philippines can cooperate with rich scientists from other countries. If you feel that that's not globalization, it is. But it is a positive aspect that we refuse to see because we only see multinational players as the only people who cross borders. It is not only multinationals that cross borders. It is also universities. It is also community groups like Rotary Clubs. It is also religious faiths that spread their gospel across places. And it is humanity to move from one island to another so that when we think globalization is only about multinationals, Hollywood, and Bollywood, it is not. Then we are miseducating our publics. The 21st century lesson is let us have an open mind about crossing borders and let us not be raped by the people who think that they can rape us. Uh, thank you uh, for that uh, exchange of ideas. Uh, any other comments from the audience? Reaction? Anything? Yeah. Anyone? Yeah. Uh, yes, please. Um, my question is to Hi, good afternoon everyone. I'm Rev. I work for Dr. Matalans at AIM and also part of ASEAN Society. Um, my question is addressed to Ms. Ordora. Um, I'd like to be enlightened about the quality assurance, the reference, quality assurance reference framework in ASEAN. H how is it going on and when it is going to be fully implemented in case you know the, the progress of this initiative so that when we look at MRAs in ASEAN, its full implementation, we would see somehow um, the improvements in terms of the coverage, as of mentioned by by uh, a professor from from area. Um, so, how is it going on in case of this uh, progress and development? Thank you. Okay. Uh... Let me share first on the quality assurance. Okay, since this establishment, um, okay. uh, since this morning you've been hearing about the ASEAN University Network, right? Okay, so the AUN was uh, uh, instrumental in uh, one doing the quality assurance framework in ASEAN. So in their approach, they offer this institutional approach to quality assurance and uh, you know, in, by design, they uh, look into the institution as a whole, uh, providing for strategic, systemic, and functional quality assurance. Um, okay. Essentially, since this has been uh, implemented, um, they now have about 99 AUN quality assurance assessors. So they have, you know, this uh, set of people who go around doing the assessments of uh, participating uh, programs in universities. And uh, since 2007, uh, this system has been utilized by 226 undergraduate and graduate programs in about 39 universities in eight ASEAN countries, including Timor-Leste. So you'd see that it's not all 10 member states yet. Uh, because as I said a while ago, quality assurance is about, you know, um, building that zone of trust among education institutions in the region. As you know, some countries in the region like Singapore have a very high standard 
uh, of education and they may be already considered as an outlier when it comes to quality assurance. So they, they are already way above you know, the, the regional uh, uh, QA system. For ASEAN Qualifications Reference Framework, since it has been adopted I think a year ago or just uh, the year before that, uh, the current work uh, going on is that uh, the, res uh, the member states are doing their respective referencing at the moment. Not all ASEAN member states have their national qualifications frameworks yet. Some are still in the process of developing their own. So for those do that do not have yet their NQFs, what they do is to refer to the ASEAN and, and see that you know when they develop their model, it's already aligned with ASEAN. While those that already have their own uh, can use the ASEAN Qualifications Reference Framework to do their own referencing. Uh, it, it, I think it's a very technical work and it will take a lot of time. So it will not be the same phase for all ASEAN member states. So, but, but at least at the, national, at the regional level, the AQRF Permanent Committee has already been established and they're chaired by Brunei Darussalam in Indonesia chair and vice chair respectively. So that committee is uh, composed of uh, representatives or officials uh, representing education sector, labor sector, as well as economic sectors. Uh, there's already a terms of reference and um, recently there's been uh, letters of intent received from uh, four countries formally conveying their interest to reference to the ASEAN Qualification Service Framework. So these are Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, and Thailand. So I assume these are the countries that already have their own national qualifications frameworks in place at the national level that they are ready to reference to the regional framework. So those uh, are the current developments in this area of QA and QF. All right, Ms. Rodara, thanks so much. And, and is it safe to say that um, that in a way has an effect to the development of MRA. Um, how is it being conducted in the region? Because the reflection, it's, it's like there is a direct a correlation between how the progress, how, how, how the qualifications framework is uh, progressing to how the MRAs uh, are supposed to progress within the region in terms of uh, alignment of specialization and all. Is that correct? Um, is that a good assumption? I, I cannot say whether that's a good assumption or not. May, uh, mainly because uh, I am not so uh, well immersed in the details of the MRAs. The, the, the process of um, mutual recognition agreements and the succeeding work on that is handled by the economic pillar, not under the social cultural pillar. Unlike the QA, and AQRF, where our pillar, social cultural pillar, is heavily uh, involved. Right. Whereas the uh, mutual recognition uh, agreements on uh, services is more handled under uh, trade in services. So there goes again our challenge of um, coordination between pillars. It's a continuing uh, challenge for us in ASEAN, but uh, I'd like to believe that we're making progress. Um, but, but but you were right, uh, I, not, not on the assumption, but on saying that the MRA's implementation is still very limited and you know probably we, yeah, you can assume that it may have something to do with this uh, readiness of countries on NQFs and referencing of the ASEAN. Okay, thank you. Are there other comments? Yes, please, madam. Thank you. Um, uh, just a couple of um, comments and, and questions, I guess, is because uh, Director Rodora was talking about uh, social protection and, of course, safety nets, right? But when you look at most of the initiatives, really, for um, uh, the social cultural community and nation building component of ASEAN, it's really geared towards the say upper 20-25% and not to the masses. Um, if we are looking at social protection for the marginalized, 
what is it really that ASEAN is doing collectively? For instance, case in point, MDGs. One of the easiest things to do would have been to adhere to the agreement to reduce the illiteracy rates. If we had done that, small investment, then there would have been tremendous uh, positive impact. But the ASEAN uh, member states, including the Philippines, have not reached target. So what is it really that we can point to as uh, an ASEAN uh, initiative that can strengthen the base for social cultural community and nation building. And the second uh, um, issue I wanted to raise is really for the youth. When we're looking at uh, innovation and education, um, our young people are very active in social media and they're forging communities, but it's not in the direction of unifying a country or unifying a region. Uh, it's something else and sometimes I feel that it's taking us to darker uh, corners. Maybe because ASEAN and the governments, uh, member states, do not know how to deal with uh, technology, innovation, and social media. Thank you, uh, Madam Rasul. Uh, that will be our last uh, question or comment. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, give the floor to uh, Rodora after this will have a break because I think they will have to set up this room for the next session. Further, please. Okay. Um, on social protection, I think the, the intention of ASEAN member states is uh, very clear as stated in the declaration. First, it recognized social protection for all ASEAN citizens as a right. And um, However, cognizant of the different um, levels of development of uh, the member states, um, the declaration did not specify you know, a, a regional target and by when that uh, full coverage or, or sufficient social protection should be uh, achieved. What it talks about is a progressive realization of social protection for all in ASEAN. Some countries are making headway in, in terms of uh, doing this, but others are still in the early stages. And that also makes it difficult for ASEAN to come up with something really, you know, uh, uh, as a big ASEAN approach to social protection because we're so varied and uh, there are so many limitations in, in doing this. And that's why uh, there's no one cookie cutter approach when it comes to social protection. The, the aim is clear though, we're not, you know, moving the goalposts. That the intention is to have social protection for all and looking at it at different aspects. Uh, recently, we have been engaging with the ASEAN Community Statistical System because uh, one limitation of social protection in the region, as mentioned a while ago by Dr. Chen, is about database. Uh, we, without very clear uh, and very reliable information or database, regarding social protection in, in, in all its dimensions, it's difficult to come up with appropriate policies on social protection. I mean, we don't even know exactly the universe of uh, persons with disabilities in ASEAN, or I mean, in any one member state. So how can you craft a very good policy responsive to a specific sector needing social protection if you don't have that adequate data? So what we are uh, slowly and but what's really working on in ASEAN is laying those foundations to, to set up a, a, a comprehensive you know, and uh, full coverage social protection later on. There's a lot of work going on as well in terms of universal health coverage and old age pension. In other can, countries that are fast uh, aging, uh, a lot of policy discussions are going on when it comes to how do you address the need to protect social security or central provident funds, you know, considering the aging in, 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 in societies, but at the same time making sure that people are adequately covered of social protection. So there are just so many issues to be looked into in, in social protection. So it cannot be a one size fits all approach for all ASEAN member states. We're, we're trying to address the situation in many fronts, but I cannot speak of a one, you know, big ASEAN uh, uh, initiative on social protection. And that goes as well for education. Uh, even before the SDGs, ASEAN has already committed itself 
uh, to education for all as an MDG uh, goal. However, we know that there are many factors contributing to the non-achievement of that EFA. And it's, some of them are really structural or fundamental issues and would require so much more effort, not just from the social cultural pillar. You know, it, it takes a whole of ASEAN, you know, whole of government approach in uh, addressing all these issues. But uh, what, what I was conveying a while ago is that, again, while we are continuing the efforts to have uh, an internationalized, harmonized, international uh, higher education system, we don't leave behind the concerns of those that are unreached. The children who are out of school, the youth who are out of school. And um, we're in the process of crafting that regional program and getting the support of many partners to implement initiatives to address this uh, phenomenon of having still millions of children out of school in, in ASEAN. So I hope, you know, uh, people in ASEAN would have enough patience to, to, to wait for uh, results and, and outcomes to come out of these initiatives in ASEAN. But then again, whatever we agree in ASEAN, uh, the main responsibility of uh, implementing initiatives lies with member states. ASEAN as a regional body works best in terms of sharing knowledge uh, and best practices, sharing experiences, and creating the platform of engagement. At the end of the day, it's still at the national level that we need to implement the many needed actions to realize the aspirations of ASEAN. Thank you, Rodora. With that, uh, please uh, join me in thanking and giving a round of applause to our speakers of Dr. Benito Macaranas, Dr. Fauci Sen, and to our discussant, Ms. Rodora Babaran. So we are uh, closing now this session. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you.